We've all been there, staring at a blank page, wondering how to turn our idea into a real app. Normally it takes hours of coding, debugging, and setting up frameworks. But what if you could skip all that and go straight from an idea to a working project? That's exactly what Dualite makes possible. In this tutorial, we'll take an idea and transform it into a fully working, full-stack web app in just minutes, all with the help of AI. We'll explore Dualite.dev, the AI-powered full-stack app builder where you can design apps by simply describing them in plain language. You'll see how to connect it to a Supabase backend, customize project rules, and even review the actual code that Dualite generates. From there, we'll build a flashcards app together, test it in real time, and add new features as we go. You'll also learn how authentication works, how to manage users, and finally, how to publish your project online so it's live for the world to see. So let's dive in and start building. So this is the homepage of Dualite.dev. All you're going to do is click the first link in the description box of this video, and it will bring you right here so you can start using this amazing tool. Go ahead and sign up for an account. With your free account, you'll still have access to almost all of the powerful features of Dualite. You can connect your Supabase account, access the code of the app you generate, and even deploy your app. So here now I am logged in, and this is where all the magic happens. So right at the center, we have an input box. Here, all you're going to do is describe the app you want to build, the features you want, the type of pages you need, and details like the theme, colors, and overall style. Think of it as giving instructions to a designer and a developer at the same time. The great thing is the prompt text can be written in any language you feel comfortable with, so you don't have to worry about using perfect English. Later in this video, I'll also show you how to write a detailed prompt that will give you the best possible results so your app is closer to what you have in mind. Now, uh, if we look towards the top, we can select the framework and language. For the framework, you'll see options like React with Tailwind, React with Chakra, React with Shad CN, Plain HTML with CSS, HTML with Tailwind, Angular with CSS, Vue with Tailwind, and even React Native if you want to build mobile apps. Each option is here to match different styles of development. For example, if you just want simple web pages, HTML and CSS might be enough. If you want modern, responsive apps with reusable components, React or Vue are better choices. If you want a ready-made UI system, you might go with Chakra or Shad CN. And if you're targeting mobile devices, React Native is the way to go. For this video, let's leave it as React with Tailwind. And also keep the language as TypeScript, which is a safer version of JavaScript that helps prevent common mistakes. Right below the text box, we have more options. You can upload a reference image to give Dualite an idea of the design style you want. You can import a Figma design if you already built something visually in Figma, or you can even attach an API specification if your app needs to connect with an existing backend. This is very useful because instead of starting from scratch, you can continue building on something you already have. Next option is the project rules option that lets you set specific instructions for how your app should be generated. Think of this as the ground rules for your project. While the main input box is where you describe the app you want to build, the project rules option is where you can control how Dualite behaves during generation. For example, here you can define coding standards like whether you want all components written as functional components or if you want your files organized in a certain folder structure. For example, I can go ahead and specify the theme and the colors here and every part of the app that gets generated will automatically follow those design choices. This makes it very easy to keep your whole project consistent without having to repeat the same details again and again. Let's say you're not very comfortable writing in English and you'd rather interact with the AI in your own native language. You can simply add a rule like, since my native language is Italian, I want to interact with you in Italian. Once you've added all the rules you want, whether they are about code structure, styling, naming conventions, or even language, you just go ahead and save them. That's it. From then on, Dualite will automatically apply these rules every time you generate new code, so your app stays neat, consistent, and perfectly aligned with your personal style. Dualite also has an option where you can connect your project directly to a Supabase project, right from its own interface. You'll see that option available here, and in a moment, I'll show you how to link the two. But before we actually connect anything, let me quickly explain what Supabase is. Supabase is what we call a backend as a service. In simple words, it gives you the server side of your app without you having to build it all from scratch. It's built on top of PostgreSQL, which is a very reliable database system, 
and it comes with a lot of features ready to go. For example, it has user authentication, which means you can add sign up and login forms that are secure right out of the box. It also gives you database tables where you can store your app's data, storage buckets where you can keep files and images, and even real time updates so your app can show new data instantly without refreshing. So now let's connect our Superbase. If you don't already have a Superbase account, just go ahead and create one. It's free. After you sign up, you'll be directed straight into creating your first organization. Here, you simply give it a name, set its type, whether it's personal, educational, or business, and finally choose the plan. You can keep it on the free plan to get started. Then, just click Create Organization. Now that we have our Superbase account and we've also created our new organization, let's head back to the Dualite page and connect it to Superbase. Click on the Superbase icon, then select Sign In with Superbase. Next, choose the organization that you want to grant API access to and then click on Authorize Dualite. Once the connection is complete, you'll see a page with two options, either create a brand new Superbase project or connect to an existing one. Since we don't have a project yet, let's go ahead and create a new one within our organization. First, select the organization, then give your project a name. I'll call mine Flipwise. Next, enter a database password. After that, pick the region where you want your project hosted. I recommend going with the suggested region since it usually gives you the best performance. Finally, click Create a new project. Now we'll wait a few seconds while Superbase sets everything up. When the status indicator turns green, it means the project is ready. At this point, head back to the Dualite page and click the Sync button. From here, you'll be able to select the project you just created. And there we go. Once you choose your project, you'll see a message confirming that it has been successfully connected to your Superbase project. That's it. Now the front end we're building with Dualite is fully connected to a real back end powered by Superbase. Now finally, it's time to add our prompt. The prompt is so important. It should be as detailed as possible and also clear for the AI to understand. The more effort we put into this step, the better the results we'll get. So, to achieve the best results, first open up ChatGPT. Whenever I start a new chat, I always make sure to clarify exactly what I want from the AI. In this case, we want to create a web app using Dualite Alpha, right? So first, I'll go ahead and ask something simple like, what can you tell me about Dualite.dev, the AI-powered full-stack app builder, and its key features? And just like that, ChatGPT gives us plenty of details about the platform. Next, we need to explain the project that we want to build. For example, let's say, I want to create a full-stack flashcards learning app using Dualite, an app where users can create decks of flashcards, quiz themselves with front and back cards, and use a spaced repetition system to review forgotten cards. Users should also be able to export and share their decks with friends. Once we enter this, the AI will list out all the features, sections, and pages the app should include. Now, this is not the exact prompt we'll use inside Dualite, but it's an important step. We need this information because in the next request, we'll say something like, Now, please provide a fully detailed prompt to build this app and achieve the best possible results using Dualite. And there we go. ChatGPT comes up with a fully detailed prompt that includes everything. The data model, UI pages, styling and UX, deployment setup, and even deliverables. From here, we can refine the prompt even more. For example, let's define the theme and colors we want to use for the UI. I could say, the app should have a black and white theme with a pure black background as the base. Use CBCB, FB, 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 and 8C, 8C, 8C in gradients for different elements and pages and include large spotlight effects. Once I enter that, the AI refines the prompt again and adds the theme colors we requested. After we're happy with the result, I usually wrap things up by saying something like, please turn this into a single, slightly shorter text. And just like that, we now have a clean, fully detailed prompt for our flashcard learning app. So let's go ahead, copy this prompt, head back to Dualite, paste it into the input box, and before selecting the send button, let's go into the project rules and remove the Italian language rule. Since we are interacting with the AI in English, we don't need this extra instruction. Once you remove it, click save, and then go ahead and press the send button. Immediately, the AI gets to work. Now, an important note here. Every time Dualite wants to make changes to your Superbase database, 
it will ask for your manual approval. This is a safety feature to make sure nothing gets changed without your consent. For example, right here it says, this migration establishes the foundational database schema for a flashcards learning application. In other words, it's creating the basic database structure our app needs. To apply these SQL changes to your Supabase database, simply click the Apply Changes button. Now, the AI is writing all of the code for us, so we just need to wait a moment while the app is being built. Okay, there we go. Look at what we have here. Such a nice interface. Uh, we can already see some cool design elements, like particles in the background that react to our cursor, and a sign-in page right in the center. Don't forget, if there's anything you'd like to change or add, whether it's the interface design or the app's functionality, you can always ask the AI to update it for you. For now, since we don't yet have an account, let's sign up. Just enter your email and password, then click Sign Up. All right, the page just reloaded. Honestly, it would have been better if it displayed a message like, check your email for a verification link instead of simply reloading. But don't worry, we can easily ask the AI to make this improvement later so users get a clearer experience. Let's move on and check our inbox to see if the verification link has arrived. Yes, here it is. Actually, I tried signing up three times, so I'll just open the latest email. Once we click on the link, our email is confirmed and the message says, authentication successful. Now, keep in mind, if you don't want users to go through this email authentication process, you can disable it directly in your Supabase project. I'll show you how to do that later on. For now, let's head back to our app and try signing in again. Enter the credentials, click sign in, and there we go. Our FlashMind app is ready. At the very top, we see a welcome message with the username. Just below that, there's a search bar to quickly look up any decks we've created. On the right side, we can toggle between grid view or list view, and there's also a new deck button that lets us create a fresh set of flashcards. Since this is a brand new account, the page currently says no decks yet and gives us a clear call to action button to create our very first deck. Let's go ahead and select that. Now we're on the create new deck page. At the top, we can enter a title for our deck and add an optional description to explain what the deck is about. Below that, we can start adding flashcards. Each card has two sides, the front, where we write the question or prompt, and the back, where we add the answer or explanation. We can keep adding as many cards as we want using the add card button, and when we're finished, we just click save deck to store it. So let's create our first deck together. For the title, I'll call it Web Dev Basics. Next, let's add a short description, a beginner-friendly flashcard set covering the fundamentals of web development. Now let's build our very first flashcard. On the front, we'll write the question, what does HTML stand for? And on the back, we'll put the answer, hypertext markup language. That's it, we've created our first card. Let's go ahead and add a few more the same way. Just type the question on the front, then the answer on the back. Once you've added as many cards as you want, click Save Deck. And just like that, our deck is ready to use and ready to play. So let's click on this Study button to test it out. Here we can see the flashcard appear on the screen. On the front, you'll always see the question. The idea is simple. Read the question, think of the answer in your mind, and once you're ready, just click on the card to flip it over. That's where you'll see the correct answer. Okay, it sounds like we have a problem. When the card flips, the text is also turning upside down, which makes it hard to read. So what we'll do is write a prompt to explain this issue clearly so the AI can hopefully fix it. In addition, the player currently doesn't have any navigation controls. There's no button or action to move forward to the next card after viewing the current one. That's another improvement we want. So I'll add both of these requests into the prompt and then send it. Now let's wait a few seconds for the process to complete. After it's done, we'll refresh the page open the deck, and select Study again. And there we go. It now works perfectly. The text flips correctly, and we also have navigation. See how smart this AI is? Now, once you reveal the answer, you can specify whether your response was correct or incorrect, or just skip the card. And once you finish going through the entire deck, the app displays the results in a nice summary.
Sounds amazing, right? Earlier in our main prompt, I also asked for the decks to be downloadable for users. Let's check if that feature works. So head back to the home page, open this deck, and click the download icon at the top. And yes, it works. Even better, you can choose the download file format. For example, if you want to save it as a text document, you can simply add a prompt like this. When users download their flashcards, the file must be a .txt document. Then select Send and wait a few seconds. Now it's done. So let's test it out. And there we have it. The deck downloads perfectly as a text file, fully readable and ready to use. Next, let's head back to our home page and click on the Settings icon at the top. This page gives us a clear overview of our account and learning progress, all stored in the back end. So this page really acts as both a dashboard and a history log, uh, showing us all the progress we've made in the app. So now that we have taken some actions in our app by creating a deck, let's see if the info has been saved in our Supabase back end. As you can see here, it has automatically added four tables, card reviews, cards, decks, and profiles. And this is honestly amazing because we didn't have to manually build this database. Dualite, together with Supabase, has set it up for us behind the scenes. That means the moment we use the app, the backend structure is already created and ready to store our data. So in short, what's happening is every click, every deck, and every card we add in the app is automatically mirrored in these tables. It's like the app is writing our actions into the database for us. Now, if you do not want the user to be authenticated when signing up for an account in your app, you can go ahead and disable that process here. Open this sidebar and move to Authentication. Here, we can see the list of users who have signed up to the platform. At the moment, there's just the, the single test account I created earlier. To disable the confirmation process, go to Sign In and Providers, and at the bottom of this page, you'll see the option to turn off Confirm Email. Let's switch that off and then save the changes. All right, let's test it out. Now, when a user signs up with their email and password, their account should be created instantly without needing to verify through email. But before we try this out, let's first publish our app and make it live. That way we can test it properly in another browser. To publish, click the blue publish button at the top. To do this, you'll need a Netlify account. If you don't already have one, no worries, you can create it in just a few seconds for free. So let's go ahead and select create with Netlify. We're now directed to the sign up page for Netlify. Go ahead and sign up, and once you're done, you'll be asked to authorize the connection. Just click Authorize, and you should see a message that says Authentication Successful. From here, all we need to do is click the Go Live button and wait for the process to finish. Great, it says the deployment is complete. And here we have the link to our live app. Let's copy that link and open it in another browser. And there we go. Our app is now live and ready for the world to see. Let's test the signup flow again. I'll add an email and password, hit sign up. And as you can see, we've landed directly on the FlashMind home interface without needing any extra confirmation. Also, don't forget you can review the project's code by clicking the code button at the top. Here you'll be able to go through the full code of the project. And that's a wrap. We've just taken an idea and turned it into a fully working full stack app complete with authentication, flashcards, and a live deployment, all in just a few minutes using Dualite. If you found this helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe so you won't miss future tutorials. I'll be covering even more tips and projects that will help you level up your web development skills. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.